Ladies and gentlemen, the American Broadcasting Company brings to its entire network one of radio's most unusual programs. Pat Novak for hire. office reads that way. Pat Novak for hire. Oh, there's no way to dress it up. If you're in business down on the San Francisco waterfront, everything but murder is a parlor trick. If you rob a few graves, you can pay the rent. Nobody cares if you got sore eyelids. You get that way from winking at too many things. Oh, it's a good living if you don't run short of bail bonds and Benzedrine. I discovered that Friday night... After the fight broadcast, I wound up in a little whiskey barrel on Powell Street. I had a Glasgow farmer out of the red when they closed the bar, and I drifted across the street for a cup of coffee. When I came out, it was raining, and the street was deserted. I stood in the doorway and watched the dull neons through the rain. They looked splotched and dim, like watercolors rubbed with a damp rag. It was beginning to rain harder, and... I started out of the doorway when she ducked in and bumped up against me. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just wait for your blockers on the next one, huh? I guess I bumped into you. Don't go out on a limb. Oh, I'm very sorry. I, I guess I didn't know where I was going. You seemed to be headed in the right direction. How do you mean? Forget I noticed. It's raining awfully hard. Hmm. I wonder if you ever noticed how... When it rains, you feel lonely and lost? Yes. Yes, that's it. How when it rains, you feel lonely and lost. Yeah, well, we're both great readers, so if you'll let me get by, I want to get a cab. Yes, I... I wonder if I could ask you something funny. The bars are closed. No, I... I meant coffee. I'll pay for it. All right. In here? Sure. Come on. The counter will do. All right. What's it gonna be? Hey! You back again? Yeah, two coffees. How come? I'm nervous. Two coffees. You like a bear claw, maybe? You know what we want? Two coffees? Yeah. Be right with you. Thank you. I know it's funny asking you in here, but... I have to talk to someone. I don't know what I'm doing. I won't argue. I've been away a long time. Yes, a long time. Yeah, the kids will be glad to see you back. Huh? Stop it, will you, sis? Get to the point. Put the show on the road. Yes. I think I've lost my memory. At least it seems that way at first. Who are you? I don't know. I suppose you don't believe it. No, but I convince hard. Here you are. Two coffee. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I'll be down here if you need anything else. You thought up a name yet, Buster? Oh, you'd be crazy to believe me. I guess you'd be crazy, but... I can't remember anything. I guess... Now, look, lady. If you got amnesia, see the police. But you don't believe me. I don't know. Maybe you are leveling. But if you're off your rocker, go to the police. But suppose... Suppose there's something that happened before, and... The police would be looking for me. Please. Would you try to help me? How bad are you? Do you know what town you're in? Yes. Have you been here before? Do you live here? I think maybe. Seems like a place I've been. All right, I'll put you in a cab. You go see the police. No. I feel funny. I... I think I'll go outside for a minute. I don't want Hilda to know. Please, I'm going to... Oh, please... Mister, your girlfriend's on the floor. Yeah, any suggestions? No, she's your date. All right, here, give me a hand, will you? Well, where are you going to take her? The hospital. 
It was an amnesia case. I hope your memory's good. Huh? You'll need it for answers. Your girlfriend's passed out for good. Don't tell me. I feel a pulse, mister. You're going to have to start over because she's all used up. Oh, that's good. You got a wailing wall? Sure. Use the corner while I call homicide. <laughs> didn't take 2020 vision to see I was in trouble. Maybe it was an accident, maybe it wasn't. I didn't have any idea why she keeled over there, but with a figure like hers, I knew it wasn't old age. That call to homicide meant Hellman was going to be in the picture soon, and then I'd stand about as much chance as a cornfield in a stone quarry. Well, I went through the girl's stuff. She had no identification. There were a couple of snapshots of her, but no name. I told the waiter my name and where Hellman could find me. And then I got out of there. I looked up Jocko Madigan, an ex-doctor who liked his booze pretty well. Smart guy, but he used a mason jar for a jigger. I finally found him holed up in some after-hours joint on Geary Street. He was talkative. Hello, Patsy. A small jug for Mr. Novak, waiter. I want to talk to you, Jocko. Patsy, you shouldn't be here. It's after hours. Yeah, look, Jocko, I need some help. What do you know about amnesia? Oh, a temporary blessing. Uh, I thought I had it myself once. Oh, stop it, will you? But it just turned out to be a case of bad bourbon, uh, a peasant's drink, I've decided. Get up the street level long enough for me to talk. I'm in trouble. Yes? I met some blister tonight who took a dive after one cup of coffee. Oh, I see. She had amnesia, or she thinks she did. Oh, well, if she's dead, why worry about amnesia? <laughs> it's a minor ailment. Because Hellman's going to think I had something to do with it. She picked out my lap. Don't you see how it's going to add up? I have high hopes. i got to do something in a hurry. Uh, was she a nice girl? Yes, I guess so. How come you met her? What difference does it make? Tell me about amnesia. Could she phony it? Maybe. Not for long. What makes you think she did? I don't know. She acted like a butterfly with a jag on, and she headed straight for me. It just doesn't add. No. What cell block can I find you in? You can get off your spine and go to work for me. You know the hospital circuit. Hit them all and find out everything you can about recent amnesia cases. Well, how far back do I go? Until you find one that jibes with this girl. It's impossible. Where do I start? I feel like Noah when they told him to beat the flood. She's blonde, blue eyes, expensive clothes. How big? Just the right size for a good dream. Start checking now and give me a ring at my place. No identification? Uh, None. She only said one thing when she fell. Oh, something crude? No, she mentioned a gal by the name of Hilda. That should be easy to trace. Sure. Just look it up in the phone book. You will find it uh, somewhere between Hellman and Homicide. Right, lover? Well, there wasn't anything I could do for the next few hours except sublet from an ostrich. I had to keep undercover because all I had to work on was a couple of snapshots and a girl named Hilda. Neither figured to get me out of this mess. Hellman was bound to ask a lot of questions because I had as much business being with a dead girl as Lucky Luciano in a finishing school. After I left Jocko, I took a sea car downtown and I went home to grab some sleep. When I walked in the apartment, the lights were out. But that didn't make any difference. Hellman's badge was shining like a lake in Ireland. He was making himself at home with my ice cubes. Hello, Novak. Put the light on so I can watch you turn pale. All right, Hellman, get to the point. Sure. Who was your girlfriend? I don't know. She was the coy type. So are you, Novak. You're going to look good sucking your thumb in the gas chamber. I suppose your coroner is full of good news. She died of an overdose of sleeping pills. The coroner's report is murder. How about the space mark suicide? No dice. You don't take sleeping pills, then tour the town for a spot to take a nap. So she died in a coffee joint. What am I supposed to do, carry a stomach pump? You're supposed to tell me who she is. We'll go from there. I don't know. Neither did she. I've got that down as a lie. You file it any way you want, Hellman. She was amnesia. So are you, Novak. All right, hire a medium then. I told you. She came into the restaurant a total stranger. We got social, but she died a total stranger. How are you going to prove it? I don't know. If I knew who she was, I wouldn't play footsie with you. Do I have to draw a map? She came in trying to sort out her marbles and never got there. I see. What did you find out? How about clothes markings? That's your department. How about laundry marks? I don't know. I guess she washed her own. Look, Novak, you're a big boy now. You're in a spot. If you want to help, now's the time to do it. You got everything I know. From here on, you work the ball downfield. All right. 
You just answer the doorbell from time to time. When you see a guy grinning out there, that'll be me coming to pinch you for murder. Well, that'll take lots of doing, mister, and lots of proof. You remember that. I'll try, Novak. But I may get amnesia. Good night, big shot. <laughs> Hellman left, I backed into my headache and went to bed. Oh, sure, I was in a spot now. The scorecard said murder, and I was the medalist on the first round. If the police didn't know who she was, that meant she had no record we could work on. I still had the funny hunch about that gal pulling a phony. But if it was phony, I was worse off. I had all the best arrows in town pointing to me, and once Hellman began to build a case, I could throw away those vacation folders. I slept until about nine. The phone began to ring, and I rolled over, expecting to hear Gabriel on the other end of the line. It was just Jocko. Hello, Novak talking. This is Jocko. I've been working all night. We'll build a monument later. What'd you find out? The morning paper says the girl was murdered. Yeah, Hellman gave me a preview. What'd you find out at the hospital? I've got a complete list of amnesia victims. I know more lost souls than a Hong Kong bartender. Yeah? Most of them are men. Trying to get away from the little woman. Well, you're a big help, Jocko. Don't hang up till you hear about the girl. Go ahead. Nothing on file for the last eight years. In 1941, a 17-year-old girl walked out of California General Hospital. She hasn't been heard of since. How's the description? Oh, it fits like last year's bathing suit. She was Marcia Halpern, the daughter of Emery Halpern. Yeah? Who's he? A pocket-heavy guy down on Montgomery Street. Well, I'll get right down there. Thanks, Jocko. You saved my life. Well, I hadn't intended to go that far. See you later. Well, it was my one chance, even if the odds looked bad. I called up Halpern's office. He said he wasn't in to try him at home. It was listed for a place up on Pacific Heights, so I took a cab over there. When I walked in the lobby, I could tell old man Halpern was making as much money as you can without your own printing press. The apartment made Buckingham Palace look like something George had picked up at a fire sale. The doorman was a sober-looking specimen, the kind of guy that breathes every other Tuesday. He gave me the fish eye as I went up the elevator to the third floor. Halpern's apartment was at the east end. The butler showed me in, and I waited in the living room. It was a real cozy place about the size of a small rugby field. A door opened on the side and 200 pounds of Regency oozed into the room like a wet ghost. Good morning. I'm Mr. Taylor. I'm Novak. Where's Halpern? Well, Mr. Halpern is away on a business trip. I'm Mark Taylor, the family lawyer. <laughs> I believe that's the phrase. Oh. Well, I'll drop by later, huh? Uh, perhaps I can help you. I take care of most of Mr. Halpern's business now. Did you know his daughter? Uh, yes, yes. It was quite tragic. That's what I hear. She was a victim of amnesia. She forgot all the details of her home. Must have been a temptation. Did the police ever do anything on her? Well, the police were not advised. Mr. Halpin hired private detectives, but she was never found. Yes, it was quite tragic. You wear your mourning a long way, Taylor. She'd be about 25 now, wouldn't she? Taffy hair, blue eyes, nice figure. I believe she had leanings in that direction. Why, Mr. Novak? I think I may know where she is. You don't know what that would mean to this family, Mr. Novak. You don't know what it would mean to me, Mr. Taylor. Here's a snapshot. Yeah, let me see it. Well, Taylor, this is not a B movie. This is a picture of Marsha Halpin. You sure? I don't make many mistakes, Mr. Novak. All right, if you've used up your quota. She's downtown. I'll get in touch with Mr. Halpin right away. No, take your time. She's dead. She's... When? Last night, she got sleepy. What? Huh? Yeah, that's right. Somebody gave her enough sleeping pills to stock a drugstore. I see. After all these years, to come back, and then this. Uh, it was most... most... tragic? Yes, yes, I was about to say that. It'll be a great blow to Mr. Halpin. It'll be a very great blow to Mr. Halpin. Have the police any ideas? A few. You know anybody named Hilda? No, why? Just sweeping out the corners. 
When's Halpern due? This afternoon. I have a range of... Excuse me, please. All right. Hello, this is Mark Taylor. No, that can't be right. Well, when did it happen? Uh, yes. Yes, please keep me advised. You ought to wear a purple suit, Taylor. I have bad news, Mr. Novak. Raise yourself. I'm lightheaded. Go ahead. Mr. Halpern was killed in a motor accident last night. His car plunged down a ravine near Sacramento. Mm -hmm. That's very strange. Yeah, that must have been a great blow to Mr. Halpern. <laughs> Downstairs. All the way down, I had the funny feeling that something was wrong. The way a person feels when he goes into a doctor's office with an incurable disease. It may have been Taylor. I don't know. He seemed all right, but I still had that feeling that something was out of place, like a broken line in a perfect picture. I crossed the street and called Hellman. It was too early in the day because he was as sad as a tap dancer in moccasins. Hellman talking. This is Novak. How's the case? You look better every minute. How's the identification? We're moving slow. So far, we know she's a woman. That's right. Her name's Marcia Halpern. She disappeared in 1941 with amnesia. San Francisco? Yeah. She's the daughter of Emery Halpern. Right, we'll check with old man Halpern. You better send your best man because he rolled a car and killed himself last night. Where? Sacramento. I got news for you, too. Yeah? We got a statement from that waiter. Who wrote it? He says you brought that girl in for coffee. Also, you were nice and chummy. I knew her for five minutes. With you, that's a lifetime. The guy said you were good friends. That's the way our story's gonna read. You suit yourself. I'm busy. Yeah? Where are you going? Same place you are, Hellman, Sacramento. If I didn't move fast, I was deader than a Philadelphia nightclub. When they start taking statements, you can wire for flowers. I called Jocko and told him to check up on old man Halpern's estate. I borrowed a car and drove up to Sacramento. The accident was just outside of there. When I got to the spot, Hellman was already in charge. He's going to make a fight for the job at last judgment. They were down in the ravine, and Hellman was beating around the bushes, making more noise than a Venetian blind in a typhoon. Hello, Hellman. Did you find anything? Get your own hashtag. I'm busy. Where's the body? You get the blues if you don't see one corpse today. He's up in town. Did you notice those tracks up there in the road? Yeah. Double tracks don't mean a thing. Oh, sure. Maybe two cars fell down and one got lost. Wake up, Hellman. If he drove over the side, he sure had a tough time making up his mind. When you're through on that pipe, I'll send over another. I'm going over to the car. Hellman went over to the car, and I started looking through the bushes. I don't know what I expected to find. Maybe an old boy scout. After about ten minutes, I shifted over to the other side, and it showed up right near the ground under a bush. Hellman must have seen me because he came right over. Hey, what is it? What'd you find? A handkerchief. Oh. Hmm. That's funny. What's funny about it? So it's a handkerchief. The old man had a nose, didn't he? Well, he must have loved it then. His hanky's loaded with perfume. Take a whiff here. Yeah. Recognize it? Sure. I don't know about you, but I smell a rat. <laughs> Things began to move. This was the first break, and Hellman knew it. I went back to town, and I tried to get in touch with Jocko, but he was running up a tab somewhere, so I drove over to see Mark Taylor again. When I got to the apartment, I found out he wasn't in, but the pinch hitter was all right. When she opened the door, I got a nice warm feeling, like a melted cheese sandwich. She was standing there in a dark, silk evening gown. It was strapless, and she had no worries. When she spoke, it was like saying, put another log on the fire. Good evening. Is Taylor in here? Won't you come in? Sure. Mr. Taylor won't be in for a while. I'm waiting for him myself. I see. I'm Pat Novak. Is it urgent? Anything I can do? If it were, you'd get my vote. Who are you? I'm Hilda Travis. I'm a friend of the family. Which family? Would a drink take off the rough edges, Mr. Novak? It might. Good, I'll make one. I brought Taylor a present. How nice. A girdle, maybe? Or am I being catty? No, a handkerchief. This one. Do you like it? Should I? I thought you might want it for a keepsake. 
I found it in the ditch up in Sacramento, about ten feet from Emery Halpern. Poor Emery. Here's your drink. Thanks. Poor Emery. It's full of perfume. You want to smell? That wouldn't do any good. You want to know if it matches my perfume? It's your idea. Go ahead. All right. Now, closer. That's it. See? Yeah. It's early in the evening, Mr. Novak. Don't blow a fuse. I won't until I find out who killed Marcia Halpern. Good luck, for everybody's sake. By the way, the uh, police think you killed her, don't they? Did Taylor brief you? A little. I asked him this morning if he knew a girl named Hilda. He must have forgotten. Yeah, everybody's got amnesia. Just to make things easy, did you kill her? Just to make them hard, did you? I see. Well, just tell Taylor I called. Don't be a savage, Mr. Novak. You haven't finished your drink. And it's raining outside. I'll finish this one. That's good. Sit down beside me here. We'll finish our drinks and pray for a cloudburst. She turned out to be an old-fashioned girl. She had about eight of them before I got out of there. I tried to pump her, but she wouldn't talk about Marcia Halpern. I just became a family friend. After I left, I ducked into a drugstore and started phoning Jocko. I finally caught him at the hunt room. He'd worked his way below the label already. Hello, Patsy. I'm having a wonderful time. Yeah. What'd you find out? I just heard a funny story. It's old. What about Halpern? Uh, he barely changed his will after the girl died. The whole estate goes to her. Who's next in line? A fellow named Mark Taylor. That's the new part of the will, drawn up three weeks ago. Good boy, Jocko. So I looked up the dope on Mark Taylor. He's a family friend. It's a new club. Go on. Looks all right. Some funny bank book stuff, though. For instance? Well, he drew 3000 bucks out last month for a Lisbon passage. A girl named Helen Dupre. Maybe she's a foreign cinema discovery. Oh, he's no talent scout. Meet me down in Homicide in ten minutes, Jocko. If we're lucky, we'll show Hellman something. What? How to draw to an inside straight. Hurry up and don't stop for a bracer. Well, just don't smell my breath. See you soon, Lava. I'd explained everything I could to Hellman when Jocko got there. I went over it for him and sent him out on an errand. He was to meet Hellman and come up to Taylor's apartment. I went on ahead. It was about 11 o'clock when I knocked on the door. Mm, Mr. Novak, so soon. Yeah, I'm coming in. Hello, Taylor. I won't say you're wearing out your welcome, Mr. Novak, but it's getting very thin. You better take time out and pack your bags. Is that nice, Patsy? Because a guy named Hellman wants you for murder. We've been over that once, Mr. Novak. Yeah, but we got a whole new infield this time. Hellman thinks you killed a girl named Helen Dupre. I don't know a girl named Helen Dupre. The bank vouchers say yes. They say you brought her over here six weeks ago. Wait a minute, Pat. Oh, you made the team too, Angel. They got you all fixed up for old man Halpern's case up in Sacramento. Get out of here, Novak. I left a drink here. Find a bar there. Get out of here. I wouldn't want to jam this gun through your face. Come on in, Hellman. Did you bring him with you? Yeah. Come in here, fella. Is that the girl? Yeah, that's her. Where'd you see her before? Sacramento last night. He's crazy. It's a plant, Mark. Tell him more, Junior. You sure she's the one? Yeah. She was on the road, and I seen her at the car with this old fella. Hang on, lady. The road gets bumpy from here on. My lights were out, so I guess she didn't see me. Take this little guy out of here. I got a story. I seen you hit the old fella, then start the car down the bank. I didn't hit him on the head. I told you that, Mark. Yes, you did. Tell him, Mark. Tell him I was here. How can I when you tipped our mitt? That's right, Taylor. Get out while you can. Tell him I was here, Mark. Well, you little fool, don't you know you've told them already? You're a bum guy, Mark. You've been a bum guy all along. I keep my mouth shut. I'll give you a chance to talk. I'll tell you about him, Novak. Shut up, you little half -wit. You're all right on the straightaway, but you're a bad guy on the curves, Mark. Keep still, Angel. For a tin-horned punk like you, I'll talk lost. You'd better say it fast. Yeah. You get any prize in the house, Taylor. Take your choice. Are you working for a living, Hellman? Yep. All right, then, let's go. Yeah. See you downtown, Novak. Is she all right, Jocko? I'm out of practice. Well, Patsy. You like it this way, baby? No complaints. 
I've always gone first class. I wouldn't like it the other way. Yeah. I could have used a little more time, but I'm not greedy. It's still raining out, Patsy. No. It stopped raining. It's beginning to clear up and over. Come on, Jocko. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> It seems that Marcia Halpern was dead for years. Somewhere on the other side, a girl named Helen Dupre got the story out of her. She looked a lot like Marcia Halpern, so she waited until after the war and contacted this Mark Taylor. They cooked up a hoax and the pot boiled over. She was supposed to fake amnesia and stumble into the hospital. The pictures in the wallet would be printed. Mark would identify her as Marcia Halpern. The same night they planned to kill the old man the way they did. That way, Helen Dupre and Mark could split the dough. But they figured it wrong. Another girl named Hilda Travers had the story, too. She put the squeeze on Mark, and he blundered. He found out he didn't need a phony Marcia Halpern after all. The new clause in the will gave Mark the dough. So he loaded Helen Dupre with sleeping pills while Hilda gave the old man his last ride. All he had to do was wait for the dough and then split with Hilda. A few things went wrong. Sometimes it only takes one. Helen did her part, but she was no Bernhard. And then at the last minute, she knew something was wrong and mentioned Hilda. I kind of began to wonder when Mark identified that picture so fast. After more than eight years, he identified it immediately. And then there was that handkerchief. From there in, it was freewheeling. All we had to have was a witness. Oh, that guy from Sacramento? Well, he was some actor that Jocko picked up in the hunt room. Hellman finally cleaned up the mess. Taylor's in the clink. And of course, the girl already picked up her end of the check. Oh, she was nice, too. If you don't mind claw marks. Well, it all worked out and Hellman's happy. Except that actor keeps calling him up for parts. The American Broadcasting Company has just brought you the third of a new series... Pat Novak for Hire, starring Jack Webb. Jocko Madigan is played by Jack Lewis. Inspector Hellman is played by Raymond Byrne. Music was composed and conducted by Basim Ablam. 